Welcome to the Bozen Koto Performance. My name is Tomo Johnson, and I will be your host for this evening. On the event, I believe that it said、uh, Tomo Johnson and Utanoichi Okura will be pre- presenting. Sadly, Mr. Utanoichi is not able to be here with us、uh, on this evening. Right now, I am sitting down in the middle of a small tatami room in the heart of Tokyo, Japan. All the way across from the other side of the ocean. From you who is watching in,、uh, I presume, Boston, as this is where、uh, this event is taking place. But who knows? This is online, so you may be anywhere in the world, you know, from Hawaii to, you know, England to, I don't know, Israel. <laughs> But yeah, it's really cool that、um, we're able to share、uh, these kinds of things with you online this way.、Uh, this is a very、uh, traditional world. You know, the,、um, these instruments,、um, everything that、uh, is centered around them is very old fashioned. The people that play them, uh, that uh, do this、uh, as their profession, you know, most of them,、uh, they average in, you know, the, the 70s, 80s maybe, and they're very. You know, scared of touching all this、uh, new techno- technology stuff, and they don't do it. So it's、uh, a very rare opportunity for us to be able to, you know, go around and do these kinds of events. And I'm very、uh, happy to be here, and I know that I have the next hour to be here to educate you and entertain you with some. Nice music, and I hope that you enjoy、uh, our presentation. Thank you. So, back to self instructions.、Uh, my name, as I already said, is Tomo Johnson. I am 20 years old as this year, and I'm half Japanese, half American, born and raised in the Bay Area in California. And I have been playing the Koto for Just about nine years now. Wow, nine years.、Um, but yeah, you know, I, I started at the age of 11 and、so、for a really stupid reason. You know, I was playing trumpet and everyone's playing trumpet and I wanted to be unique. I was like, oh, the koto. Like, no one knows what the koto is, so I'll try that and be unique. You know, and look, well, got me here. So I guess it's not that bad of a thing. But、um, yeah, that's my、uh, history. I've been playing it,、uh, this instrument, for, you know, That whole time just kept on going. Never really stopped. And yeah, and、uh, the reason why I'm here presenting in front of you right now、um, is, you know, because I、um, am acquainted with、uh, the hosts of this event, uh, Miko uh, from Crane and Turtle. Uh, she's uh, actually a funny story.、Um, I was almost going to intern for her back in the day when I was.、Uh, After my first year of college, I hated it there, and then I was、uh, deciding to drop out, and she offered me、uh, an internship at her company. And I thought about it, and then I declined. But, you know, we've been keeping in touch, and sh- she, you know, she knows that、um, I've been doing this, and she reached out, like, hey, there's this event that we're doing. And I was like, hey, sure, why not? So, yeah, and,、um, you know, so I'm in Japan. Right now, I'm originally from America, but I've been living here in Japan for a little over a year now. I'm actually going to school for Koto.、Um, I'm going to a little specialty school here.、Uh, it's not even really a school, there's only three other students here aside from me, so you know that's when you know this,、uh, this industry is very, very niche.、Uh, you know, not many people doing it. Uh, it's really sad, you know. It's very uh, amazing instruments, uh, amazing piece of work,、um, and just,、uh, just beautiful music that comes out of these. And just、uh, so many people、uh, don't know of it and don't get the chance to do so. So,、um, so that's why I'm here today to try and share that with you all. Next is、uh, Utanoichi Okura.、Uh, this is my teacher here.、Uh, his Utanoichi is actually his stage name, and his real name is Satoshi Okuda, and he is one of the young,、uh, you know, great masters here. He's actually at a 
another performance uh, today. So he's very he's very busy uh, man, but um, yeah. So basically, uh, he's part of this organization here called uh, Seha, more of a school or a, a way of teaching, sort of like the, uh, the schools of teaching of, you know, like karate and Buddhism and all of those, those different schools of teaching for, uh, Japan really likes these, there's schools of teaching for everything, for, you know, tea ceremony and um, archery and everything, there's also, and that applies to uh, Japanese traditional instruments as well. So the school of teaching that uh, myself and uh, Mr. Utanoichi that we both preside in is called uh, Seha, and it is has been around for over a century now, and he is actually uh, part of the family that started uh, this whole organization. So he's next in line to be the head of the whole thing. So he's a pretty big name. And he's uh, been very successful. He's uh, successful as a composer, and he performs, and he's, you know, he's been all around the world, and he's uh, creating more uh, different contemporary music. Uh, you'll see I'm actually going to be performing one of his pieces later today. But yeah, so uh, sadly he could not be here today. But actually, I have a little um, video that he sent me. Uh, so, here you go. Konnichiwa, Okuda Utanoichi to Yimas. Watashitachi Game Project wa Shingata Coronavirus Kansen Kakudai no Ekyo Kikake ni online deno Koksai Koryu ni Chikara o Irete Yimas. 私たちが専門とする日本の伝統芸能、古都、それから三味線。この日本の伝統楽器をぜひ海外の方にも体験していただきたいと思ってこのプロジェクトを行っています。ぜひ皆さんも私たちの交流にお付き合いいただければと思います
outside in the world. First of all, they're huge, as you can see. It's a pain to get this on the plane. I've tried. It costs a lot of money. <laughs> but also, you know, it's a very reserved uh, world, culture. Uh, I think I explained uh, prior that most of the people that are part of this, they're, you know, they're in their, their late, you know, 60s, 70s, and, you know, they don't want to go off to scary foreign land, they want to stay here <laughs> in Japan, where they're, they feel comfortable and they cheer. So during this whole um, COVID-19 uh, situation, we were going through and we were looking at how useful the internet really is nowadays. And Mr. Donoichi, he came to me uh, presenting about, hey, why don't we start up just uh, online lessons and a shop for people where we can connect to people all over the world? And I said, hey, that's great. So yeah, so we are starting up uh, our own thing where hopefully it is not quite set up all the way yet. It is coming very soon. But we're trying to set up a system where you can, you know, you can go online to our website at uh, gen-japan.com. I'll probably say that again many times. But gen-japan.com, and you can go and you can order your own uh, instrument, you know, uh, for probably a lot cheaper than you can find uh, on other places as well, because we will be using a lot of old uh, discarded instruments. Uh, that people, you know, they have stored up in their, you know, in in their attic. Their their grandmother used to play it a long time ago, but she's been dead for 20 years, and it's just been sitting there. So, you know, we collect those and the other things that, uh, the other instruments that we have here laying around in the organization. We repurpose them, we refurbish them, and then we try to sell, send them off uh, out into the world. And then after that, we have online courses and personal one-on-one -on -one lessons that we'll be starting up to try and teach people uh, to about how on how to play these. And most of those people, you know, will probably just be, hey, this is something, you know, a little hobby you can do for fun for the time being. But, you know, our goal and our wish is that hopefully some of those people that decide to go through this and get this, uh, that they really they really get into it and they get uh, passionate about these instruments and they want to keep on going into the world and at some point you know they they end up going pro and they you know and they do this as a profession and they go on and they get their um their own uh license for this uh there's there's a license that you need uh from this organization to be able to teach but, um, you know, they, they get to a point where they're able to get that, and then they can go on and teach the next generation. And we can keep on going and keep this whole thing alive. And just, we just don't want to let these instruments die out and go, you know, into the annals of history. You know, we want to keep these going into the future. Uh, there's a lot of amazing contemporary music coming out for these instruments nowadays that people just don't know about. It's really just a shame. And that's part of what we're here to share with you today. So I hope you stick around and enjoy our show. And, you know, if by the end I have possibly convinced you or, uh, you know, you were maybe a little interested before, please uh, feel free to come and check out our, our website or any of our other, or, you know, just email us directly and get in touch or anything you know just uh we we're here to help you get started on your road to learning how to play so please so yeah so now uh that is the self-promotion part done so now uh i will go into the section of actually explaining what the heck this giant piece of wood with strings on on it is so yeah let's get into that Okay, so here in front of me we have what we now call the koto. It is a 13-string zither instrument. 
Sometimes you'll hear it called the Japanese harp. I've even sometimes heard it called the Japanese version of the piano. But it is technically a in the zither category of instruments along with the Chinese guzheng and the Korean gaigum. And I know there's even a, a Vietnamese version, but I can't remember the name of that one. Um, it originally came from China, originates from the guzheng, you know, as many other things in Japanese culture do, and it came through originally the Okinawan Ryukyu Islands, along with the shamisen, or what is originally known as the shamisen. And you'll know, maybe some of you know, that in Okinawa there is the, uh, the Okinawan version of the shamisen called the sanshin, and also there's actually a Okinawan version of the koto, I think it's called the goto. Um, but yeah, and it came through, came up toward into uh, Heian period Japan, and it was originally very different. It was a six uh, string instrument without these sort of bridges that you played uh, putting on your lap. Uh, if any of you have ever seen the movie, uh, the Studio Ghibli movie, Princess Kaguya, there's actually a scene in it where she was playing that. And originally, it was implemented as a part of the Gagaku Ensemble. Gagaku, for those of you who don't know, is one of the oldest forms of Japanese music, and it is the Japanese imperial music. It is meant uh, to be played for the emperor in very special um, Shinto religious rituals. It's um, if you, if any of you have never had the chance to listen to Gagaku, please look it up on YouTube. It's it's nothing like you've ever heard before. It's very um, ethereal, if I could say. Um, it also has the power of putting you to sleep, but it's very beautiful. Um, but it's been in Gagaku for ages, and it's still part of that. But nowadays, it's come along, and it actually, you know, back in the Edo period, uh, is when the modern day, what we call the modern day koto, was kind of brought out uh, with the 13 strings. And originally, actually, it was meant only for blind people. Uh, in Japan, there's an old culture where musicians are blind men. So there used to be uh, this, or there is this giant um, instrument that we have here called the biwa. It's sort of similar to the shamisen, but all of those people and the people that play the koto uh, all blind, which is very interesting. It's very different from different places, but um, that was the culture. And there's actually also a, a very prominent stereotype here in Japan that playing these sorts of uh, traditional Japanese instruments is a very um, womanly thing to do. It's very girly. So it's actually very unusual to be finding men to be playing uh, koto and shamisen, which, you know, of course, overseas is not that uncommon. Um, but over here, you'll see I, I come to school here, but I'm the only uh, male student here, and as well as the teachers, um, Mr. Utonoichi that you saw here is the only uh, male teacher that actually uh, teaches here, which is very interesting. But I believe that comes from, you know, a very uh, big tradition of, you know, all these geisha and oryuan, uh, these places where men would go uh, to, you know, have the company of these beautiful women and what they would do to entertain them is, you know, play uh, koto and shamisen, and, you know, and dance along with it. But I believe that it comes from that sort of place, and it's very seen as a very girly thing to do. So, next I will be talking about these things on my fingers. So these are called the tsume. They are the picks that we use to play the instrument. Yeah, so go like that. So these go on our thumb, our pointer finger, and our middle finger. So we use three of these, and none on the other hand. So, and these, uh, there are actually different versions of these. Uh, these actually go along by the style of playing. So there's the ikuta tsum, style of tsume, which are like these, where they are square. And there is always also the yamada version of tsume, where those are actually circular at the tips. And the, the style and how you play changes from those types. And these, the material that is used, is actually 
I uh, traditionally ivory. So I remember uh, back uh, a, a couple years ago, I was watching a TED talk of this uh, shamisen player, and he was talking of this old Japanese uh, saying where beautiful things, uh, beautiful music uh, comes with a sacrifice. And he was talking about how many uh, parts to Japanese traditional instruments use these uh, sorts of animal parts with them, which I personally, you know, is I think is kind of wrong and is not necessary. But traditionally, a lot of these things use these sorts of um, exotic animal parts. Uh, for example, the bachi for the shamisen, which is the giant, uh, you know, scraper kind of looking thing that they used to play, is made out of ivory and can also be uh, used a uh, turtle shell. Excuse it. And the part of the shamisen where uh, it's played against, that is actually traditionally made out of cat and dog skin. And then, of course, these uh, tsume, they're made of ivory, and also these bridges here, they can be made out of ivory, and they can have, you know, ivory uh, decorations. And actually, even nowadays, the type of wood that is used uh, in some parts of the world is seen as um, illegal <laughs> to cut those. So a lot of things are uh, very uh, exotic and not you know, in the Western world, using cat or dog skin, you know, that's very frowned upon. But nowadays, there's a lot of uh, plastic uh, counterparts, so you don't really have to worry about those things. That's only, you know, some people still use those. But even over here, that's uh, starting to become more frowned upon. And most things are made out of plastic, so I hope that doesn't deter you uh, from using or hearing these instruments. But that's just one aspect of traditional Japanese music. Next, I'd like to get into explaining how this instrument is actually played. So, first of all, you may have noticed that I am sitting on the ground in traditional Japanese seiza style. You may have also noticed that I have a couple cushions in between my legs, that's because I'm not very good at doing seiza. But this is traditionally how it's been played for centuries. But nowadays, you'll sometimes find people playing on stands and on normal chairs. And the fact is that this is actually um, the sound, it reaches better because the hole where the sound comes from is on the bottom of the instrument. So if it's on the ground, it actually gets muffled a little bit. So, how it's played, so you'll notice that I'm sitting diagonally to the instrument. Right? So, and that's because these, think, these tsume, they're square, right? So if you sit diagonally, it positions it perfectly so you'll actually hit the strings on this corner. So if you go like this, right? So right, and that sounds beautiful. So this is, that's how it's played. And the traditional tuning of this instrument goes as D, E flat, G, A, B flat, D, right? And there are octaves. It goes up as about a three octave range. So if you go here, that's one octave, and it goes up. And how it's... And so you might be wondering, right, there's only so many, and... Right, so like, how will you play, like, E and F? Those are missing. And how we get to those is actually we use this other side of the instrument. So let's say, for example, on the sixth string, which is on E flat, if I... Right, so if I play this, this is E flat, but if I push down a little bit, if I play... That's an E, right? And if I push down even more, I can get up to, that's an F, right? So we use that, it's called oshi, right? That means push in Japanese, so oshi. And then there's also, not as much, but you can also pull on the string. So if I, this is a G here, and then if I pull, it goes down a little bit. So we can use those kinds of techniques to get the sounds that are missing, right? And then you also notice that I'm playing only on this side of the instrument. That's because this side, if I play it, sounds pretty bad. This side is generally not played on at all, except for maybe some um, more contemporary pieces that are coming out recently. But this is just a, a no-touch zone for most sides. Next, I'd like to get into explaining what the sheet music is like for traditional Japanese music, because it is very different from Western music. 
And this is the sheet music for the very first piece that we're going to be performing for you called Yae Goromo. So immediately you will probably look at this and be like, what the heck? It's crazy, all of these Japanese kanji and Chinese characters. Right? So I'll go through it. So first of all, right down here is written down what the tuning of the instrument is. And I forgot to mention in the last segment, but actually the koto, the tuning for the actual, the whole instrument changes for each piece, right? So those bridges are movable. So you'll be moving them. So some pieces, they might go up, you know, D, E flat, right? And the, the normal tuning, but then some, sometimes maybe the E flat will change to an F or, right, it'll go from a B flat to a C and all those things, and even in the middle of some pieces, right, in this piece even, it has tuning changes in the middle, so while you're playing you have to move the bridges to the exact location, change the tuning. It's very difficult, so usually when you're watching performances you'll have a little interval in between each piece where the musicians will have to actually retune the whole instrument. So, right here it says, for the koto, this kanji for the koto says kumoi joshi, which is one of the traditional uh, tunings. And for here, it says tune the one string to the same as the sound for do for shakuhachi. And the sound for do on shakuhachi is D. So that means tune it to D. So that's what that says. And over here is the actual music. So we have this is a duet for koto and shamisen. And then there's also singing in the middle. So right here, we have kimi ga tame. Right? So that's what the singing part is. And over here, so we'll go in for the koto part. So right here, these are kanji, but these are very simple kanji. These are all kanji for normal numbers. Right? So if people that know, you'll see that this is the kanji for two, and this is kanji for seven. And we'll go down seven, six, seven, six, five, one, and then two, seven, nine, five, ten. Right? So very simple, once you actually learn what they are. And then also, Right, you'll see here that this two has a little, if you can see, it's very small, but there's two little dashes right above it. So that means play this, play the two string using your middle finger, right? So this would be play the two and the seven string at the same time using your middle finger and your thumb. So you go, and then that's an octave, right? And then down here, you'll see there's a little dash mark here right next to the six. So this means push down on the other side of the sixth string and push it up one full note. So we'll go from an E flat to an F. And then you'll see somewhere if there's just one dash through it, then that means up half a note. And there are also these different things where this, there's an A here, there's a little A symbol. That means push on the other side after, so make a little wham sound on the side. And then also you'll see that these are all so this is all one measure right here. So it's a square, and these are, you know, quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, that's a rest there. And then down here, you'll see that there's these lines next to them. And those mean that these are eighth notes. And then as more lines go up, the shorter the, the note goes up. So if there's two lines, then you know there's a, what, a 16th note, and then there's three lines is a 32, 30, 32nd note, right, and they go up like that. So it's fairly simple. And then over here, there's the music for the shamisen, which is similar but slightly different, and that's a whole nother thing. But then here is kimi ga tame, and then here, actually, for singing, there, you'll see that there's a little seven symbol right next to the key. So that means that sing, key, at the same, at the same sound that the seven is for the koto. So if you play the seven, that's a G. So sing key at the octave of a G. And that's what the music is like. You may have noticed in the sheet music that I showed you before that that is actually a duet with Koto and Shamisen. And the truth is that the Koto is generally an ensemble instrument. And most pieces are meant for, you know, duets, trios, quartets, quintets, and all those sorts of things. I actually went and asked um, a clerk at a traditional Japanese music shop 
when I was looking for solo pieces, and what they told me is that actually only about 10% of all compositions for the koto are solos. The rest, 90%, are those sorts of ensemble pieces. And these sorts of ensembles are played, you know, just with kotos, or with, um, you know, shamisen, shakuhachi, and actually other different types of kotos. Uh, when we say koto, we generally mean uh, this standard 13-string koto, but there's actually more types than just this. So, there's also this giant behemoth of an instrument, which is called the 17-string bass koto. This was originally invented in the early 1900s by a named man Mi Michio Miyagi, who, who I will get into later, but as in the name, it's a bass instrument, so the tone is actually much lower. So here, if I play it in scale... Yeah, so it's much, much lower tone. And this is originally created as a ensemble instrument, so it's meant to be played with the higher toned, uh, normal 13-string koto, and then the bass koto. But nowadays, you'll actually find a lot of people branching into using this itself as a solo instrument. And there are many, you can find on YouTube, um, many, many people that are playing these beautiful pieces on this instrument. Sadly, for our performance today, we will not be utilizing this, but please uh, do yourself the favor of going and looking for some videos. Uh, there are people such as uh, Kazue Sawai, is very famous for specializing in this instrument. And along with this uh, instrument, there's also the 20 string koto, 21 string koto, 25. Uh, at this point, I'm not entirely sure uh, how many there are because uh, when I notice, they're just the numbers keep on going up. But those are instruments that have been created more recently that are meant to be more as solo instruments uh, and they're created by people who specialize you know in the 13 string koto but they find that the limited range of just 13 strings is not quite enough for them to be able to uh, fully represent so they add more strings to be able to you know have more sounds that they're able to produce and it keeps on growing now I would like to get into the performance part of today's presentation. The theme of today's performance is the old and the new. We will be playing two pieces that are from back in the day. They're old pieces from the Edo period, which is from the mid 1600s to the 1800s when uh, modern day koto music was first created. And then we'll be playing three more pieces which are more modern that represent the modern day, more contemporary aspects of koto music. And so our first piece that we will be playing for you today is called Yae Goromo, is the piece that I showed you the music for uh, a brief moment ago. And Yae Goromo uh, translates to many layers of kimono. And it is has this is the only piece today that we'll be performing that actually has a song as part of it so we will be singing in it and the songs in it are actually called our tanka which are sort of the the long versions of haiku so instead of uh, 575 they're 57577 and they are taken from this uh, giant compendium of old tanka called the Hyakuni Ishu, uh, and they are all tanka which uh, mention in some aspect kimono, so that's why it's called many, and it has five of these tanka in it, and that's why it's called many kimono. And this is a piece that I will be playing alongside uh, Mr. Utanoichi, this will be a duet uh, with me playing the koto and him playing the shamisen along with it, so I hope you enjoy.
The next piece that we'll be playing for you is a piece called Godan Ginuta. And this is another piece from the late Edo period, so sometime around the 1810s, 1820s, and is another duet,、uh, this time with two kotos, with me playing a highly tuned koto, and then Mr. Janoichi playing a more lower tuned koto. And Godan Ginuta,、uh, it means done in the middle, it is the way that we call、uh, sections. In old Japanese, and go is the number five. So, go dan means that there are five distinct sections in this piece. And then, kinuta are these wooden bricks that they used to、uh, hit kimono with after washing them、uh, to make them more softer,、uh, more sparkly,、uh, something like that. But it used to be a very distinct、uh, tok 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 sound that you used to hear. And there are many pieces with this name Kinuta in them that、uh, try to encapsulate that sort of sound. So you'll hear in this piece that there are many parts where there's something called Kakeai, where I will play a sound and then Mr. Utanoichi will play a sound and we'll go back and forth to try to emulate that tok tok tok、uh, sound. So I hope you enjoy.
So that is going to conclude the old part of today's performance. And now we would like to move into the new part. So these are three more modern com compositions that are all solo pieces that will be played by me. So this first piece that I'd like to play for you is a piece called Tegoto, composed by Mr. Michio Miyagi. And this Michio Miyagi, he is a very, very big figure in the Koto world. He is, he is a blind compositioner from the early to mid 1900s, and he is almost single-handedly um, responsible for creating what we now consider as modern koto music. And he made uh, hundreds and hundreds of pieces in his day, but today I'd like to play for you tegoto, which tegoto um, means it is the part in the old pieces back in the day uh, that is played, is the fast part that's played in between the singing parts. So, such as in the first piece that we played for you, Yae Gonomo, so we'd sing, and then there's those uh, intervals in between where we'd start playing fast, and they're more long places, but those are called tegoto. Te meaning hand, and koto means stuff. So stuff that you do with your hands. So it's encapsulating those sorts of fast-paced, um, more energetic parts. So I hope you enjoy.
The next piece that we have for you today is a piece called Tori no Yoni by Mr. Tarao Sawai. Tori no Yoni translates to like a bird, so that is、uh, what this piece is trying to encapsulate. And Mr. Sawai is another very prominent figure in the Koto world. He was one of the、uh, major composers of the last previous generation. And He is responsible for creating the Sawai school of Koto music, which is one of the other major branches, along with the、uh, Seiha school that I am part of, and also the Miyagi school, which、uh, Mr. Michio Miyagi、uh, he founded back in the day as well. And Mr. Sawai,、uh, he was a very interesting figure because they, or the Sawai school in general, they focus more. While the Seiha school here we focus more on traditional music,、um, the Sawai school focuses more on contemporary stuff and they are、uh, moving forward and trying to create new, more new music. And、uh, Mr. Sawai, he was the creator of that and he created、uh, many different、um, amazing pieces. And nowadays his son,、uh, Mr. Hikaru Sawai,、uh, he is the leader there and he's also. Uh, keeping that forward. He's a very interesting figure as well, actually. He has a, a major a rock background, and a lot of his compositions, especially his ensembles,、uh, they have,、uh, if you listen to them,、uh, you can actually hear some like Led Zeppelin and other you know, famous uh, rock uh, inspiration in them. And they're very interesting, so, and they're also on YouTube, so please, if you have time, go and check them out. But this is、uh, Tori no Yoni. By Mr. Tara o Sawai, and is one of my personal favorite pieces, so I hope you enjoy.
Now we would like to move on to our last piece of the night, which is a piece by the name of Barado, or Ballad, as it would be pronounced in English, composed by Mr. Utanoichi. Um, I, I tried to convince him to uh, play it himself, but for some reason I don't know why he, <laughs> he was very adamant on me playing it instead. So uh, if you'd like to go and see um, him, performing it. Uh, he has a video of him doing so on his YouTube channel, so please go and check that out as well. And this piece uh, is a piece that he composed in his younger years, and he claims that this is his attempt at trying to create a koto piece that more encapsulates that uh, the more western feel of classical music, and he's a very uh, big fan of classical music, he listens to a lot of uh, piano and violin, and he is trying to encapsulate those sorts of, you know, that Chopin, uh, Debussy, Mozart sort of feel, but keep it as distinctly Koto music, try to make it sound like Koto. There's a lot of other people that try to do the same thing, but they use, you know, the standard Western tuning where it goes up A, B, C, D, E, F, G but instead he uses, you know, uh, a variation of a traditional tuning method to try and make it more koto-like. So I hope that you enjoy.
So, sadly, that is going to have to end it for our presentation this evening. I hope you all enjoyed uh, my little educational presentation and our performances. Um, again, I'll remind you, if any of you are at all uh, interested or would like to get more into uh, learning how to play these amazing instruments, please come check out our website at gen-japan.com. There will probably be a link down the description of this video. And also, all of the uh, recordings for the performances that we did today are all going to be on our YouTube channel at Gen on YouTube, uh, so there should also be links for those in the description, so if you'd ever, you know, like to go and listen to these again, uh, you are most welcome to do so. And so, thank you all so much for coming, uh, and good night. <laughs>